Jess Quinalti from Red Helmet Training and uh, Firefighters and Fire Trucks Getting Ice Cream. I'm actually out in Virginia Beach teaching at the Virginia Fire and Rescue Conference and uh, we're heading over to pick up Chase Sargent, uh, author of Buddy to Boss and uh, Firefighter Extraordinaire to go talk about all kinds of cool stuff and uh, pick up some ice cream, so stay tuned. So here we are picking up uh, Chase at the convention center. Uh, it was actually snowing yesterday and we're going to get ice cream today. It's freezing. My Hello, brother. Sir. How are you? How you doing, man? <laughs> Get you a yellow engine for you? Yeah. like that? All right. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. It's been a long time since I've been in a Mac. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with that, I got to tell you. Not at all. Uh, I got to drive one for the episode of Nashville with Ben Martin, too. And, oh, oh, nice. Man, just love, love the Mac rigs, man. So cool. Alright, let's see if I can figure out how to drive this thing and get to an ice cream shop. That Better than you than me. <laughs> so, uh, teach it. what are you teaching uh, tomorrow here at the conference? So tomorrow I'm going to do um, a couple short series. One's called Battlefield Firefighting. Okay. And it's, uh, it's sort of drawn off of... Um, like General A.M. Gray's Marine Corps Doctrine, Sun Tzu, um, and some other uh, uh, Mattis's concepts, and it's really, it's really about taking what they currently know about tactics and strategy and structures, and right. sort of changing their vernacular and their vision to look at it as combat and as a battlefield and all the things that come with that that have been learned of thousands of years of combat and right. it's real applicable to the fire service um, but it's just a matter of getting people to think that way you know tactics and strategy courses are good and we've all been through them but right. at some point in time you have to change the way you think um, to be more efficient and uh, safer and more aggressive and then learn how to be aggressively defensive yeah for sure i mean uh we just saw recently, uh, we just had two firefighters die in a fire in Porterville yep. this week. And, uh, you know, I saw I saw some stuff on that yesterday. I guess they uh, they got a report of a lady inside, possibly in a wheelchair. Uh, but it looked like there was definitely a lot of fire in that place. Oh, yeah. So. And I think that, you know, those guys did what they were supposed to do. I haven't seen the preliminary report, but I think... One of the lessons there is that, and we've talked about it, is nobody goes to work anywhere in this country or anywhere in the world in the fire service and consciously thinks today is my last day. Right. That today is the day I'm going to have to make that moral and ethical decision to have the courage, even if I know that it's going to cost me my life. Yeah, nobody goes to work and decides that they're going to put themselves or their crew in danger. Uh, it's the the tempo, the building, the fire, it's, uh, there's just so many things that go along with it. I, uh, I got trapped in a garage on a wildland fire in California in 2006. Wow. It's not like I went to work that day and I said, that sounds like fun, let's go do that. Yeah. You know? I got, I, I will say not trapped, but I got disoriented one day in a storage fire, you know, like one of these, you store it, you lock the key kind of thing. Right. Because the doors had collapsed from the heat and we were breaching walls to try to get up into the to the next unit and into the ceiling and it was uh it was like a big storage unit there was stuff all over the floor and we just we didn't get lost but we were like wait a minute exactly where are we right you know what's uh well we talk about that right what's one of your most memorable fires that you can remember for you uh -huh. change your ideals and well, I'll tell you, when you talk about changing your perspective, interestingly enough, we're getting ready to drive by. I was a fire captain at Station 3, and we were just sort of starting to get our our first layer of female firefighters uh, on the job. And there was, obviously, in the good old boy days, there was um, 
you know, there was some pushback, and um, right. but we had a an old wooden two-story balloon frame house that sat in here somewhere. We got a working fire there one day, and it was going pretty good. And uh, Eleven, who was down at the ocean front, got there just in front of us because we were already out. So I pulled up, was on the back, and was on the primary line. And uh, there was a girl, she just retired as a battalion chief from Virginia Beach named Lori Themides. We had just hired her. And, and uh, we were moving down that hallway, and uh, all of a sudden, it didn't flash, but it rolled down the hallway, rolled over our tops, rolled over our side. Right. And you know, and I yelled, and it, it everybody's head down. Everybody got her head down, and my th initial thought process was, she's gone. She, she's going to be over my back and gone. And how wrong I was, man. The minute my head came up, she was dragging us down the hallway on the line. Right. Aggressively going after it. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Maybe we ought to stop stereotyping people and, and and watch how they do and watch how they act as a sled dog and are they a member of a team. And that really changed my perspective on a lot of stuff. Um, but it, you know, I've, I've had a lot of big fires and a lot of single family dwellings and, in my career. Um, but that really changed my perspective in the, you know, real early 80s on uh, teamwork and not snapshotting people and, you know, watch what they do.